Hey guys, so in this video we are going to see how we can update the user interface with the values for the AMO, the score and the time uh, variables. So let's start. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to add the text mesh pro to our Unity Visual Scripting configuration in a way that we can use nodes uh, that allow us to access the te text mesh pro components. So to do that we need to go through here, edit, project settings, visual scripting, and in the node library, we need to add a reference to the Unity Text Mesh Pro components. So, Text Mesh Pro, just search for this, for this Text Mesh Pro, and press Regenerate Nodes. So, afterwards, we will be able to ask, uh, uh, to create variables uh, with Text Mesh Pro components and to have specific nodes to interact with them. Okay, Regenerate Nodes completed. And now we can actually use it. So the first thing that we need to do afterwards is to create variables in the game manager to access the three levels that we have. So it's a game manager that has the variables for the AMO, for the score, and for the time. And it needs access to each one of the labels so that it can just set the values and update the values of each one of the labels. So let's select the game manager, expand here the, the graph, and now let's create three different three new object variables to add to access each one of the labels so label amo of type text mesh pro mesh pro and it's this one not the other one so it needs to be this one and we need the label score also text mesh pro and we need the label time which is also a text mesh pro. So we have our three labels. Now we go here to the game manager and we can assign each one of the labels to the variables. So label ammo, label score, and label time. Okay, now that we have our labels, we can assign the values to our labels. And we need to do two different things. So we know that we start, the player starts with 100 of ammo time starts at 60 and the score starts at zero. The score now is a scene variable starts at zero. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to set these values when the game starts. And so before I already do it, so when we create the canvas, I, I left like this with zero. So just remove this because we, we don't want to show any numbers and we, well, only when the game starts that we are going to actually fill uh, these numbers. And when the game starts, so we have this custom event in our game manager, say start game. So we do all this, we enable the, the spawners, and now we are going to set the initial values of each one of the labels. And to do this, we have a new node, which is set text, and text mesh pro, which is this one. And let me see, no, set text, uh, actually we need to search for text mesh pro ugly and this one should have a method set text set text let me show okay set text yeah this is the one that we need and now we need to assign here the variable so let's just drag our variables because we are going to need all of them and uh, let's set first uh, the amo so it's not this so we are going to we are setting the text of this the text mesh pro component on this level so by default is yeah, assuming that we have the text mesh pro component on the game object but it's not true and now we need also the variables for the variable so we need the variable for the amo we are going to need for the time and I actually going to get it from the score and now we need to set this value here well the problem is that this value is an integer so if we try to do something like this it's going to fail because we cannot assign an integer variable into our string uh, field. So we need to convert this first. And we have a node that is to string, but in this case integer to string. So that accepts an integer and outputs a string that it, we can use in our label. And now let's just check if this is working. So the level starts empty and when we start the game we are going to set the value of 100 to this level. I start the game and yes. We have
the level 100. Okay, and now what we need to do is we can just set the initial values of the other ones as well, which is more of the same. So let's just, I'm just going to copy this node and go connect it here. So afterward, we are going to set the time, for example. And we are going to need this, no, not the time, this is a variable. <laughs> I shouldn't drag everything. Okay, so we have our label. Now we're going to need this one as well. Let me just set time here and there. And let's just copy, we can copy these two. And set the same for the score. So we have our label score and we are going to convert the score to string and set the score. And now when the game starts, we should have all three labels with the default values. Not the default, the initial values actually. Okay, time 60, score 0 and aim 100. It's okay. So, when we start the game, we are setting the correct values for our labels. Now we need to do it also when we change the values of each one of these uh, variables. So let's just copy. And actually, I don't like to do this, uh, but we could also create like custom events for each one. In code, we would create like functions for each one of these, so we wouldn't be like duplicating this code, uh, these notes. But here I'm just going to copy and probably later we are just going to refactor this into like or using super units or using custom events to to so that we don't repeat this code. I'm just I'm, I might show you at the end of this video. But right now let's just copy this and set it. So on the label, let's just copy all these notes that we need for setting the label. And now we need to go where we are changing the, the AMO, which is here uh, on this block. So when we press get mouse button down, we decrease, uh, we subtract one from the AMO, we set the variable, and now afterwards we just, and actually we don't need to use this here. Let's just delete this. Oh, sorry. Oh, I cannot delete this. So we can actually just simplify this a little bit, which is something like this it can be like this because we have access to the when we set the variable we have access to that value here so we can use it as an input and just convert the string to set to the label something like this and now let me check if it's working so we start we have 99. Oh, we need to also check. Okay. And you can see that it's updating the value of the item. And now let's do the same for the other ones. So changing the time, it's here. And we are changing the time. So there. So let's just copy. Let's just copy these ones and we just change the values. So basically the time enters here. Go and update the label, but now here we don't want the label AMO, we want the label time. And it's not working because we need to connect this here. Okay, let's see. And we still need to change something because you're, you're going to see that when we start the game, because we are clicking the first time on the label, we already start with 99 instead of 100, but we are going to fix this later. And now the time is also working. So it's updating the time. It's updating the IMO. You just need to update the score as well. Now, updating the score is a little bit tricky, trickier, let's say, because right now we are not updating the score here in the game manager. We are updating, we created the scene, uh, scene variable, and we are doing this in the actual targets, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, these are the ones that are updating the score. So we are updating the score from outside of the game manager, so we don't have a way in the game manager to say when we update the score, just set the value. We don't have an easy way to do that. Uh, there are a lot of, we have several options to solve this. I mean, we could add a reference on the targets, but then the targets are being a reference from the targets to the game manager, but then the targets are being instantiated, so we cannot reference them to the game manager. 
uh, we could create a custom event in the game manager where these targets would call it but then we need to create also a connection between the target spawner so the easiest way to do this and it's not the best way but we'll just go with that is to just update the um, the label the score label on an update event let's just do something like this and we'll just keep um that implementation by now so on update we are just going to use this oh i created a group i didn't want to group uh I don't know how to do it. Okay, I do it. And okay, you can group basically nodes of uh, similar functionality. I've, I haven't been use it, uh, using it, so I don't know. Uh, so label time, we are doing this, integer, and now we can uh, just push here the label score and set it here. And we'll be doing this on update. Not the best way to be honest, but it will work. Actually, we don't need to do this also here, but okay. Or the other option would be probably quite all okay to be to just update it after the time. So each second would update the score, but it might look weird because we might be like, uh, destroying targets and not seeing him immediately. I don't know. I'm just going to go with this and let's see if it works. Okay, so no, it's not working. Get the variable label. Oh, I'm sorry, my mistake. Not the label time, of course, but the label score. Yeah, I was assigning it to the label time, but since the time is also setting every second, that's why it was like replacing that. Now you see that we have a score. But we can actually try it. I was saying that probably it wouldn't be okay, but let's just try it. Now I'm curious. Instead of having this on update, let's just move this uh, here. And let's just update it after the time. See if it makes any difference. Because this is a little bit better, because we are already using this uh, loop to update the label of the time. So we can just use it to update the score as well. Let's just see how it works yeah okay I think we don't see a delay between uh, actually destroying the target I think we don't see the way between <laughs> I was uh, talking while uh, with the song I don't see we see the way between destroying the target and actually updating the score so I think it's quite all right Okay, so now we are updating the labels and of course we could refactor this to create a more and better way to do this and maybe one of the options like I was showing you is to create a custom event here to update the labels or you could say okay update everything or update just this label or update the label AMO, update this one and update the other one and instead of having these all uh, scattered around in our graph we could just have like a single place. Let me just show you, because this would be like the the um, the the, pro the correct approach if we were actually coding this. So we create like a custom event, and this would be closely related to like what we call a function or a method in our classes. A custom event, for example, said uh, I don't know update or set update update label update amo. Let's say for example. AMO label, in this case it would be label. And then we'll just take this from here and set it here. And now instead, I'm just creating groups, I don't know, I think I'm like using some shortcut. Uh, and now I have this custom event. Instead of having all these blocks here, just going to delete this. I could just trigger a custom event, which is the update 
uh, ammo label on this object and I could just use this block and then when I'm updating the label again which is up here I could just use this again uh, I, I think I do it too much <laughs> yes no it's just these ones and then I could just use this here that's what another way to to do this so we are not actually copy pasting the the block the notes so it's a little bit better but i don't like using like the, using the events is still like really strange for me so. and it works so we could do something like this or we could even create something like with super units which is a concept of um that we have here in the um, in visual scripting while well, we can create like reusable uh, groups of nodes inside a single node we can create a single node that have uh, inside that node we have like a bunch of nodes and we could create something like that but probably in the, um, some other video i'm going to talk about super units so i'm not going to go over that uh, here maybe the best solution would be to have something like this so update mo label i don't know i'm just thinking now out loud if I like this or not and if I should do the same for these ones as well so but I'm just gonna leave it like this so you know that you have like these two options basically the rule of thumb is if you are copy pasting code in visual scripting or proper code if you are copy pasting and duplicating code is never uh, a good solution you probably have a better option to solve the same problem and in this case I think this would be the best solution so probably would just refactor all the other labels, update the other labels using something like this. And so yeah, uh, this is it about updating the, um, the user interface. And in the next video, we are going to deal with um, managing the game state. So the game over, when the score, when the score, when the ammo finishes or when the time finishes, the game stops. And then the user can just restart the game from the, the beginning. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.